there are neighborhood beefs. What? Have you been throwing these in my yard? No. And then there are neighborhood wars. 22-year-old student and Pittsburgh native Maya Nickens knows all too well about the latter. After her seemingly friendly and longtime neighbor does the unexpected. The neighborhood I live in is a cul-de-sac that is extremely secluded. For the most part, it is as quiet as a church. I actually grew up here, so I know everyone. I know their kids. We all went to school together. We all played together. But while attending an online college class after a day full of work, her peaceful neighborhood turns ugly. So I got home about five minutes before my class started. Hurry up, parked my car, right in the house about an hour and a half later, and my neighbor drives up. Her van is in front of my car, both looking at each other. And she starts laying on her horn for about five minutes. Maya's car is parked legally, but the neighbor oddly has issues with her parking job. I had to look out the window. Why is she laying on her horn like this? And then she stopped, walked down her driveway, disappeared for like maybe like two minutes. And I just felt in my soul something was wrong. And she starts to walk up with that flat shovel. I immediately started to panic because I had no idea what this lady was gonna do. And takes the first swing at my windshield and screams, and continues to land about seven, eight, nine blows to the windshield, hits the front bumper, hits the sunroof. Get the car! It felt like I was in a nightmare. The only thing I could think to do was call the police because I, I've never been in any type of situation like this before. I've never even gotten a speeding ticket, so I didn't know what to do. And then my mother came downstairs out of her bedroom and opened up the front door, and I'm like, Mom, I need you to shut the door now. The unprovoked and violent attack causes over $10,000 of damage to Maya's treasured vehicle. I was filled with rage. I, something I wanted my whole life, worked from the ground up, 18 years old. This was something I held as my prized possession, being destroyed with every swing by this lady. I could not stop crying because all I thought about was how am I going to get to work to support myself if I don't have a vehicle? This vehicle has opened so many doors for me in my life, and it was just taken away. Thankfully, Maya's insurance company covers the $10,000 in damages. Her neighbor is charged with two misdemeanor counts in order to attend anger management classes. What's more, the attack still leaves Maya uneasy. I don't go outside anymore unless I'm leaving. They glare at us when we're outside. Family's been here for 23 years and we're here to stay. This is our home, this is our neighborhood, and we are not gonna let some people make us feel like we're unwelcomed in our own home. And if they come on our side of the property, we will call the police and have them for trespassing. If parking and trash issues can separately cause friction between neighbors, together, things can get very messy indeed. Like in Toledo, Ohio, where this woman is moving her neighbor's trash cans out of the way. They are blocking the parking spot in front of her house. Her neighbor doesn't think she's done anything wrong. You don't have the right to park in front of your house. It's a public street. I can have seven cars parked on the street. I don't matter. And supported by her husband, the public street. she starts to move them right back. Not to be outdone, the woman's friend just wheels them away again. Really 
the woman is now trying to park. But with both sides now locked in a standoff, tempers, like the trash cans, are about to spill over. The street winds up littered with garbage. But this trash tit for tat is not over yet. The woman in purple is determined to have the last word. Police later arrive, and this woman is fined for dumping trash illegally on the street. The neighbors no longer live next door to each other. A staple of the fall months is seeing leaves drop from trees in neighborhoods all across the United States. One, two, three, go. But when the leaves start to pile up, someone has to be responsible for sweeping them away. And in a trailer park in Bay City, Michigan, a woman has taken it upon herself to get in the way of another woman trying to clean up the neighborhood with a leaf blower. Can I do my job, please? The woman with the leaf blower has a legitimate reason to be there. She's been hired by the property managers to clear the community streets. I'm trying to get the leaves out of the road. The neighbor in purple came out when she saw the woman moving traffic cones in the street and thought she was doing something to mess with her car. And from out of nowhere, she attacked. Get away from my car! The car's for my dog! Without warning, the enraged neighbor charges the woman behind the camera, striking her multiple times before knocking her to the ground. I go, what you're seeing now is a view from the phone knocked into a pile of leaves. But just out of the camera's view, the irate neighbor is still attacking her victim and actually knocks her to the ground. The woman is eventually able to struggle free from her attacker and calls the police. When they arrive, authorities review the footage and document the victim's injuries. The woman who attacked has promptly served an eviction notice from the trailer park and is arrested by Bay City PD for assault and battery. As of this recording, her case is still ongoing. Ugh. It's 8 a.m. in Reading, Pennsylvania, and Deborah Marie is getting ready to go to work. Reading, Pennsylvania is a very, very great place to live. I recently purchased a home, so while I was getting renovated, I was staying with a relative of mine. I normally park right in front of where we live, but because I got home at like one in the morning, there was absolutely no parking. So Deborah parked on the yellow line across the street. But the next morning, a neighbor claims Deborah has parked too close to her car. What makes you I different? Don't care. What makes you different than me? What makes me different than you? Yes. The fact that I've lived here for two Okay, and I live over and there and I pay rent as here. well. If I knew that it was a problem, I would have never parked in front of her home to avoid, you know, any confrontations. But at that point, I realized that she was also parked illegally on a yellow line as well in front of her own home. I guess she just thought that she was exempt from the laws. Aren't you late for work? And you don't need to park on the yellow line either. I took out my phone because she just felt way too entitled. So it just escalated. She doesn't need to park here. I don't know where Look, she's on the yellow. She's on the yellow line. I'm on the yellow line. Slim, go over there. What do you see? Both of us parked on the yellow line, but because she lives here, exactly, you're not supposed to park here either, but because okay, she lives there. Don't park here. Don't, don't park, park up against don't, my Please car. stay six feet away, coronavirus. You are a Karen. Get back away. She charged towards me. Get back away. And my reflexes, they're just too fast, and my arm extended and she flew back. Call the cops. I got it on camera. I got it on camera. My head is open. I got it on camera. I got it on camera. So go ahead. I could call the cop, the cops, or you could call the cops, and we could show them the footage.
when I pushed the woman and she fell, at that moment I was I was very scared. Um, I'm not even gonna lie because when she got up, there was blood. So I'm like, call the cops, call the cops. At that point, because I knew that I had it on camera and the proof is in the pudding, you can see her charging towards me. Why are you near me? And I put my hand what? out. Why are you near? You're still coming because near me. You're near me. You're on the yellow line too. She has to be to work and she's starting ruckus. I have to be at work and I'm starting ruckus. Yes. Right. Yes. Now I have a lump on my head with blood. So, so we both gonna get a ticket. I did not think that was the end of it. She grabs her daughter. What is your problem? What is your mom's problem or your aunt's problem or your grandma's problem? You she, had no she's yelling at me. She's on the yellow line as well. She's scolding, she's scolding me for being on the yellow line and she's on the yellow line. She just said a couple of words and then went back inside. After that, that's when the cops were called and the cops came. The police arrive, but no arrests are made. The cop was like, let me see the video. I didn't get a ticket. He did give me a warning and he said, next time, you know, don't go around doing stuff like that because she could have got severely hurt. Whenever I go over to my relative's house, I clearly see that she's still parking on the yellow line. You are Karen. My perspective on neighbors avoid any confrontation. Respect thy neighbor. <laughs> like, just respect. Unfortunately, living close to other people also means dealing with other people's problems. We pull into our complex and a car comes almost crashing into us. Literally trying to come in and this lady decided to not let us in. Opening onto a main road, this is an especially narrow gate, only letting one car out or in at a time. I'm like, back up so we can pull to the side so you can get through. She wanted me to back up, but it's a really busy street when she can just back up in the complex. She came almost crashing into my car, and then I'm waiting for her to back up so that I can come in. She will not back up. This lady is very confrontational. She's just pretty miserable. This kind of stuff actually happens all the time. This isn't the first time Shayna's neighbor has played rolling roadblock at the expense of her neighbor's freedom. She starts with everyone, and this is definitely her MO. Holding up the cars that was trying to get in. More than 10 minutes go by. By now, she's blocking not just Shayna from coming in, but all of her other neighbors from going out. At this point, management comes. There's a line of people behind me. She refuses to speak to the man. Line. Other neighbors try to reason with the woman, but just like their cars, they get nowhere. I'm like, is something going on with her? She's just sitting there. <laughs> Determined to maintain her dominance over the driveway, the woman deliberately ignores all of her neighbors as she stubbornly refuses to move her car. There are four spots over here. You yeah, can pull back and get four right spots. They just want to come in. They just need you to back up. There's a lot of people. Because we knocked on her window. Clearly, you don't have nowhere to go. That's when she started crying. She's crying. <laughs> She's crying because you asked her to move. I am appalled. Like, is this lady serious? This same lady starting all of this with those crocodile tears. Finally, as the sun sets, the woman caves when someone threatens to call the police. She agrees to move her car, but the dramatics don't end there. She's finally doing what she should have did hours ago. Her hour-long standoff comes to an end. As a parting shot, the woman takes photos of Shayna's license plate, although no one seems to know why. <laughs> At the end of the day, Shayna and all of her neighbors can now laugh at their shared parking lot drama. This is my first time ever having an altercation with a neighbor, but I was gonna hold my ground. Y'all can leave. After I won the little ordeal, I start seeing some of the neighbors say, right on. <laughs> well, almost all of her neighbors. I saw this lady two days ago and she's walking like this, put her head down. <laughs> I don't care. She doesn't run past my mind. She doesn't pay my bills. It just was something unfortunate that happened, but I had to make a point. Girl, bye. She lost. Girl, you're going viral, I promise you. 
Commas is a suburb of Portland, sitting just on the Washington-Oregon border, and is where Matthew Wade has chosen to call home. I lived here for a few years now. I've never had any problems with any neighbors. Everyone's pretty stereotypically Washington, very friendly, 420 friendly, you know, a really chill environment. One snowy night, Matthew notices an unfamiliar car parked in his apartment complex on his way back from work. Pulled into my spot, I noticed a car in the spot next to mine, so my like downstairs neighbor's spot. I go inside, just playing some video games with my friends. I hear like a, a pounding on my door. Low key in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh no, I'm starting to get a little bit worried. And I put my, uh, my phone camera on record and then I slid it in my pocket because I had a feeling that something was off. I open the door and I hear like a, is this your rig? Hey, is this your rig down here? Huh? That's not my car, bro. He had already made up in his mind that it was mine, my, my rig. <laughs> you didn't even give me a chance to answer. I just asked you a question, dude, bro. Dude, and don't what me, you told me was, don't, yeah, it's your car. It's not my car, bro. Get out of my face. What? I was almost immediately able to tell that this guy was drunk, even without his behavior. Um, you could smell it. Dude. You You're hear what drunk. I said? You are drunk. I'm not drunk at all. I can smell it on you. You're an idiot. Okay, well, it's not my car. There was definitely part of me that was a little afraid. I mean, my back is against a wall. It's the staircase, him, me, and my front door. My car is not that space. Did you read the I number? I don't care about the number, dip. Okay, I'm cool. I'm telling you right now. Go. Move that Go. car. At this point, it's very obvious to me he's not in his right mind. This guy is really, you know, threatening me on an icy concrete staircase. Dude, I, I just live here, bro. Let me ask you a question. What? Do you honestly think that you're gonna tell me something? No, bro. Okay, I ain't you your bro, me. bro. Despite Matthew's attempts to reason with his neighbor, the man continues to act aggressively towards him. Move the car. You better be real careful, young man. What, are you gonna shoot I'll me? i break you in half. I bet you will. I will. In my mind, I have realistically two options. Spartan kick him down the stairs and ruin Christmas. You live down below? You hear me? You down below, huh? Or let him, you know, invade my space again. Kid, I ain't your bro. Dude, go move my car. Get your scunny ass back in there. But Matthew decides a third option is better. Disengage his neighbor and engage social media. Being a musician, how funny would it be if I wrote a diss track You don't care about the numbers, yeah, I could have told you that. Cause the rules up in your neck are really racking up the stats. You've been pounding on my door, I'm doing dishes with my cat. But the funny thing about it, I ain't hear it through the gas. Sugar Shane made the beat and now I'm taking off the trash. Listen to the woman Gary for I catch up on your ass. Got some boots up on my feet and I don't think you want the hands. Cause I got the high ground and I don't think you Superman. Wade's diss track goes viral online and is streamed more than a million times. With his newfound internet fame, Matthew reflects back on the incident in his own kind of way. This experience has definitely changed my opinion on neighbors. The good ones are so much better than I ever would have appreciated prior to this. And the bad ones can sometimes create some really funny content for you. I already made money off of you, so thank you and congratulations. And I got you on a video that you're destroying my car. Chatsworth, California. A dispute over a parking spot has sent this hammer-wielding neighbor into a rage. Get the f out of this neighborhood. Yep. Cool, lady. Call, please. I'm calling. Don't worry. The woman's neighbors have made claims of racism and harassment since they moved next door to her over a year ago. They dial 911. Hi, I'm the one. My oh, neighbor has two hammers in her hand and she's assaulting the car. She's destroying property and I have her on video. Call, please. As a result of her senseless attack on the car, 
the woman was later arrested for felony vandalism. She was released without bail and is currently awaiting trial. In Brooklyn, a driver is filming a mother-daughter team who are trying to hold a parking spot without a car. Got up two females physically blocking the parking spot. Police on the way. Report on the you want. You're the oldest one here, right? You're gonna fight him? No one's gonna fight him. No. no. Is that what you're gonna do? No. The cops soon arrive to take charge of the situation. Sensing they're losing this fight with the NYPD, the women try a different tactic by claiming the driver hit them. Report on you want. You would have hit the Did you say I hit you? Did you say I hit you? My daughter. It is. That's no good. That's, not, that's not, not good. Why? Did you say I hit I you? I left at the parking. It put me with the car. I didn't, my, my car has cameras, ma'am. I, 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 I didn't touch you. Really? My car didn't touch I you. I hope that happens to you and your daughter. Watch. NYPD hears enough and steps in. First of all, this is done. That's one. Yes. Two, you cannot hold the spot for anybody. All right. OK? You understand? I'm yes. speaking to you because your daughter Obviously, doesn't have no respect, so I'm not gonna speak to her. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm talking to you. You're, you're the adult, right? Yeah. Okay. You're not legally allowed to block a spot for anyone. You understand? Oh, no, go. The daughter just spit at the man filming. But the officer notices. Do He's that again. Do I Having attracted the attention of her entire block, mom is now justifiably embarrassed. Do you understand? No. I'm not worried. Trust me. Everybody, I'm not worried. The same the, all right. Well, you're not allowed to block, block The parking space princess can't resist one parting shot. Talk to me about all the stuff. You're in public. It's, it's you can be. State law. You can, you can report anybody in public. Thanks to the patience of the officer, this mother and daughter avoid getting arrested and learn a valuable lesson. In the fight for parking, the one with the car wins. <laughs> in the parking lot of a neighborhood grocery store in Hilo, one resident is not feeling the chilled vibe. This girl here, her license plate is <laughs> It's facade, and she threatened to slap me, and he threatened to break my windshield. According to the man recording, minutes earlier, the neighbor in red, who is on the phone to the police, lost her temper with him and his girlfriend for no reason as they tried to park. But she is accusing the man of targeting her because of the color of her skin. All this racist stuff because I have blonde hair and blue eyes. Saying I'm looking at him. What are you looking at, bitch? What are you looking at, bitch? It's unclear if the police are coming or not. But a parking attendant has arrived and is struggling to control the situation as a neighbor goes nuclear. No, it's not enough! Park your car. No! Like, what the hell? And by now, the neighbors waiting in line are also starting to get heated. Even more outraged, the neighbor turns her vitriol towards the parking attendant. Listen, you short piece of Okay. Gross. Oh, no. She me one piece of Gross. Baby. Gross. Balls. No. I'm not moving. You can talk all if you want, all you Hawaiians. The white ladies crazy. You can talk all the that you want, you Finally, the standoff ends. But when the video goes viral, the woman in red apologizes in an interview with the local news channel and promises in the future that she will show more respect and love to her neighbors, or as they say in Hawaii, aloha. Ooh.